breaking news from uh, Peter Ogburn. Yes, indeed. We got the uh, unemployment numbers in this morning because it is the first Friday of the month. Payroll unemployment or pay- payroll employment rises by 138,000 jobs in May. Unemployment rate changes little to 4.3 percent. So uh, put your uh, hat mm-hmm. on, your former hat on, as Secretary of Labor. Uh, what's this mean? Well, it's a mediocre report, Bill. Uh, you look at uh, job growth in the Trump administration, and he likes to trumpet his job growth. It's actually yeah. down from uh, where we were in the Obama years, uh, and it's down from where it was a year ago by about 20,000 uh, jobs per month. And uh, and so he talks a mean game about creating jobs, but uh, talk is cheap. And when you do things like exit the Parrot Climate uh, treaty. Uh, that that's just killer. That I, the thing as I when I watch that happen, aside from the environmental disaster and the leadership failure, uh, that's a job killer because you look at Pennsylvania. You know, he referenced uh, I'm 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 mm-hmm. here to represent Pittsburgh, not Paris. Yeah, right. Well, actually, that's a great example because in Pennsylvania there are about sixty eight thousand clean energy related jobs, including about thirteen thousand in Pittsburgh. Um, and roughly less than half, uh, like 30,000 or something, jobs in the uh, fossil fuel coal sector. And so if you want to talk about growing this economy, you should be investing and innovating in, in clean energy. And so this jobs report is uh, you know, pretty mediocre. And uh, the job creation under this president has been much less than what we saw in the Obama years. The entire argument that he made yesterday, uh, uh, and I was there in the Rose Garden, in pulling out of Paris was because this is going to save American jobs, this is going to create American jobs by getting out. In fact, he said if we stayed in, it would cost six and a half million jobs would be lost to the United States if we stayed out of Paris. So well, from a, sure. you know, not just from a political, from a jobs point of view, sure. what does... Yeah. Pulling out of Paris mean for the United States? Well, the, I mean, that's another alternative universe of alternative facts. I mean, it's uh, there we go again, <laughs> to quote a, a different yeah. president. Uh, and you always have to look at what has made America great. What's made America great is our innovative spirit. And the innovation that's going to jo- drive job growth for decades to come here, Bill, is the clean energy economy. Estimates are that the clean energy economy in the United States alone, clean energy jobs are expected to be, uh, it's going to be a $6 trillion industry by 2030, a $6 Mm. trillion industry. And let me give you an example. I grew up in Buffalo, New York. I watched the steel jobs go away in my youth. Republic Steel was a huge employer. That plant that was uh, shuttered for two or three decades, Mm -hmm. is now being replaced by the largest solar panel manufacturing facility in the Western Hemisphere, a solar city plant. We invested in that in the Department of Labor because we were investing in the human capital. We wanted to make sure that people have the skills to get those good middle-class jobs. And do you know who our competition is uh, for building more solar panel factories? It's China. And what are we doing when we leave the um, the Paris Treaty. We are ceding leadership to China. They've created an eight or nine hundred billion dollar infrastructure bank, and they're going to be using that in part for clean energy development. We should be building more solar panels in the United States. We should be building windmills here, and we're not. And you know who's cleaning our clock on that? It's China. And mm-hmm. when you walk away, that's what you do. And so, are we going to? It's important. And, and I listened to the president's speech yesterday, and, and it's important to understand cost and benefits. Do we lose some jobs in the fossil fuel area? Yes, we do. And mm-hmm. we, we should always acknowledge that. Are those costs far outweighed by the benefits? Absolutely, <laughs> by many, many magnitudes. And so when you just talk about costs and ignore the economic benefits, not to mention the environmental and the public health and the moral leadership benefits, you're really missing the mark. Right. 